everybody, what's going on today? Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a brief video on how to build the perfect type of lineup for MLB The Show. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over uh, three different types of lineups with three different types of players and kind of break down exactly what my thinking is on how I build a lineup and the type of order that I put the type of hitters I have uh, in that lineup. So uh, you guys, as always, do me a favor, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And let's take a look at what I've got right here. Um, and the reason we're doing this video is because I get a lot of people that uh, put comments on the channel about, um, you know, giving me options of, hey, I have this player, this player, this player, so on and so forth. Um, you know, maybe what, what type of lineup should I put together with them? Um, so, and I always try to help out with that, but I wanted to do a video uh, to help you guys out and kind of see what my thinking is behind that process, okay? Uh, so I have my standard lineup that I use in, in Diamond Dynasty and Ranked Seasons on here first. Um, and pay no attention to the names of the lineups across the top of the screen. Um, that's not actually going to, to matter at all. I've, I've built three different lineups here for this video in particular to show you, and they all three have uh, different uh, a different starting nine or different starting eight in the field. Um, so, so you guys can take a look at different, different ways to build with different players. So, uh, but the first thing I want to, I want to do, um, and tell you guys about is, is this is what I do. I usually, you guys know by now, I like a lot of speed in my lineup. Uh, I like a lot of fast guys because I like to steal. I like to do hit and runs. I like to move around the bases. I like to turn a, a single into a double or a triple, uh, at any point I can with stolen bases. Um, when the, when the next batter comes up. So, uh, what I always like to try to do is my leadoff hitter, uh, is going to be very traditional in the baseball sense of trying to make a leadoff hitter as a fast, uh, fast player. Uh, so, you know, Ichiro is a, is a good speed guy, um, good contact hitter and, uh, high vision and all that. So he gets on base quite often for me, uh, 2,400 at bats batting 425. So, uh, that's, uh, it's kind of hard to argue with having him at the leadoff spot. So. Uh, but that's what I like to do with the with the first hitter of the lineup. Okay, um, the second hitter of the lineup, I like to make them a consistent hitter, um, a good consistent hitter, being that uh, they get on base for me quite often. I feel confident that they can get a hit any time. Uh, you know, if I do get on with Ichiro here to lead off, uh, maybe I can steal second, and then if I get a single with Hornsby, I can score him from second, or uh, or at least get him over to third. Uh, so that's that's the goal with my number two hitter is a very consistent contact style hitter. Now Hornsby has the benefit of also being a power hitter as well. I've hit 63 home runs with him here this year, so um, a very good power slash contact hitter. Uh, so you get kind of a, a versatile uh, type style with him. Uh, for the number three hole hitter, you want a very reliable hitter, a very clutch hitter, a reliable hitter, somebody who could uh, possibly hit home runs for you. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be a big home run style hitter. Um, in this case, it is Lou Gehrig for me, so he is a home run hitter. Um, so, you know, I like to keep the lineups very traditional to actual baseball style um, and how they how they kind of roll with that. Um, so Lou, Lou Gehrig is my number three hole hitter. Uh, very reliable so far since I've had him here, and uh, he's, he's been great. Um, I've had Tony Gwynn in this spot before also. Uh, very reliable, not a big home run hitter. He does have the power to hit home runs, but is not a gigantic home run hitter like Gehrig is uh, because the power is just not not as, obviously not as high as, as uh, Lou, Lou Gehrig's is. But uh, Willie Mays is going to be my number four hole hitter in this lineup and my, my standard lineup. Uh, big power guy, uh, contact guy, high vision, got the speed also, which is just an added benefit with Willie. Uh, but yeah, he is, he is definitely, I, I like the traditional, uh, power cleanup hitter, uh, batting in the number four spot. Now, what I like to do if I can, and when I can, is I really like to take my one, two, three, four, and I like to duplicate them at least the one, two, three part of the lineup. I like to duplicate them on the five, six, seven, and eight slots of a lineup. Okay. So Ty Cobb is going to be batting fifth for me now. Um, he would also work well as a leadoff hitter. So the one and five slot should be pretty, pretty even keel. Um, you should be able to interchange those, uh, you know, if you, if you feel confident with it. Um, it. It's a great benefit that he has the great speed at 98 speed, 99 stealing. Um, awesome contact. He's really pretty much j just about the same kind of card as Tony Gwynn with more 
uh, with a little bit more power. Okay, so a five hole hitter here, he's perfect for that slot because he does have the power. He has the added pop. He can definitely get on base for you and uh, wreak havoc on the bases. Um, Roberto Alomar is going to be my six hole hitter. Now he should be interchangeable uh, by my by my thinking here with the two hole hitter uh, of Hornsby, and he is. Uh, he's fast enough to steal bases, uh, great contact hitter. I have the added benefit with him uh, that he is a switch hitter. Plus, he has plenty of pop to be able to hit home runs as well. Um, and then now for the seven-hole slot, uh, George Brett is batting seventh for me right now. Um, and that's a card that I would feel comfortable putting in the three slot as well. Uh, George Brett has been a doubles machine for me. Awesome contact hitter, totally enough power to be able to hit home runs. Uh, he does have a little bit of speed, not not a ton, but 69 speed. He still can steal bases. I've uh, stole 23 bases with him, so uh, he does he does have that ability to be able to steal as well. And then I rounded out with somebody uh, in the eight slot uh, that that could bat cleanup possibly. You know, the punch card has enough power to be able to do it, but I probably wouldn't put him at cleanup. I think I did for the first uh, few weeks that I had him until I got a better cleanup hitter uh, that I could use, but. Um, I have Pudge there at the at the eight slot. The added benefit with Pudge, and and this is this is one thing I like, is that he has enough speed uh, to steal bases at 72 speed. Uh, you know, when your pitcher comes up after Pudge gets a a single, you can lay down a bunt while stealing, and uh, and move that runner to second. If he gets a good enough jump, I will pull the bunt back with the pitcher and let him just take the base and steal the base. Uh, so then I can bunt him over to third. And not have to do the steal at the same time. So if he doesn't have, if the pitcher happens to pop up the bun or something like that, then we don't have to worry about a double play getting turned on me. Uh, so, so I like to do that with Pudge quite often. Uh, plus, you don't get a lot of side or slide steps with uh, Pudge uh, on first base because a lot of people don't think he's going to steal. It's not typically a guy I'm going to try to take third base with um, as a stolen base, but you know that's that's one of my added benefits I love with having this Pudge card is that he is uh, he is quick enough to be able to swipe bags for you. Uh, so, and then what I do with this particular lineup is uh, I take any of my slowest players that I have typically, and I have uh, with the bench, I always keep in mind ways to be able to replace that player in the game, late in the game, if they get on base, um, you know, and I'm, I'm in need of scoring a run to tie a game or get that extra insurance run or something like that. So, um, you know, Tony Gwynn is a good just uh, off the bat uh, or, or off the bench bat. Uh, Lofton is the same for me, and Henderson is also that way. Uh, but I use these. Uh, I use Ricky primarily for a pinch runner spot, and then uh, my my off the bench bats that I will use to to uh, pinch hit for the pitcher are probably going to be most likely the Joe Morgan, the Kenny Lofton, or the Tony Gwynn. Uh, but what I do, and the reason I have the Ozzy Smith card on here, is it's kind of a it's kind of a game of whoever gets on base first. Okay. Uh, so if George Brett were to get on base late in a game, uh, being that he's only, I believe, 64 speed, 69 speed, uh, you know, but I really need to get him in scoring position, I'm going to pinch run um, Ozzy Smith and put him in for George Brett. And then what I would do uh, in the at the end of that inning and when I go back to defense is I would move Hornsby over to third. I would move Ozzy Smith to short and let him play the rest of the game there. Okay, uh, if Lou Gehrig gets on late in a game, uh, what I would do is I would also still pinch run the Ozzy Smith card, and then I would move in the defensive part of that inning. I would take George Brett, move him over to first base, uh, and then I would take Hornsby, move him to third, and put Ozzy Smith at short. Uh, so I hope I hope all that makes sense. Uh, but that's that's kind of my thinking of how I build my lineups and my bench. Uh, let's look at a whole nother squad, and I'll, and I'll go over the same, same type, type of thing, okay? Uh, so, so in this squad right here, we've got Ozzy Smith actually starting in this game at shortstop. I've got Brooks Robinson at third, uh, Joe Morgan second, Frank Thomas first, Johnny Bench at catcher, Ricky out in left, Duke Snyder in center, and Tony Gwynn in right. And the way I would build this lineup uh, would be Tony Gwynn leading off, uh, just because of I, I like... I hit better with lefties personally, so I would put uh, Tony Gwynn up there leading off over Ricky Henderson. Uh, but Ricky then having enough pop to be able to hit home runs, a batting second uh, with the insane speed also uh, batting second would be would be a good hitter. And then uh, Duke Snyder I would have at third. Um, obviously has enough power to be able to hit bombs, uh, a reliable bat uh, to get on base and get base hits, doubles in the gaps, uh, decent speed at 74 speed too, so that's an added benefit. And then in the four-hole slot, I would go with Frank Thomas. 
Uh, now, you guys know I don't hit well with Frank Thomas, so I literally am just showing you examples with these. I, I usually don't use the Frank Thomas card because I'm just not good with it. It's just a, a personal thing. I'm just not great with him. So, uh, but if you guys are, you know, here's here's a great option. He's the he's a clear uh, cleanup type hitter uh, for any any type of squad. Uh, and then the five hole slot again is going to be interchangeable with the leadoff slot. So Joe Morgan with that 94 speed would be a great leadoff hitter. Um, also has enough power to hit plenty of home runs and uh, doubles and triples is a a great card to have in that five hole slot. Uh, I would probably go with Brooks Robinson in the six hole slot. And then Ozzie Smith in the seven slot and Johnny Bench in the, as the catcher there in the eight slot. Um, now with the bench and the way I built this lineup is uh, I have a backup catcher for this one um, just because uh, Johnny Bench isn't very fast. So I'd like to have somebody be, to be able to come in and run the bases for him if he gets on late in a game. Um, and what I would use for that would be uh, Alomar, Ichiro or Lofton. Um, you know, any one of those would work as a good, uh, good speedster on the bases. Now, Brooks Robinson isn't very fast. Um, what I might consider doing in that situation is if Brooks gets on before Johnny Bench does, and I need a pinch runner, obviously I don't have any third baseman on the bench. Uh, but what I would do is take this Johnny Bench card because he plays catcher first, third, left, or right. I would move him to, uh, I would use a pinch runner, obviously then for, for Brooks, probably one of these three. And then I would move Johnny Bench to third base and put the Piazza card in at catcher for the next inning. Uh, for first base, I would do the same thing. Frank Thomas is going to be the slow odd man out here on this one. Um, I would uh, I would pinch run with uh, with either of these three guys again and then move Giambi over to, uh, to play first base for the next uh, part of the defensive inning. Uh, and then let's go to the, the third and final lineup that I have kind of situated here. Uh, and these are probably some cards that a lot of you guys have as well. Uh, so, you know, we, we've got uh, Giambi at first. I've got Piazza at catcher in this one. Uh, Cano at second. Trammell at short. Eddie Matthews at third. Matt Kemp in uh, left field. Kenny Lofton in center. And Batista in right. Uh, so uh, same same kind of style lineup here, the way I would do it. Now, the five and the one slot in this instance are not going to be interchangeable. You probably wouldn't want to lead off with Jason Giambi. But he is your type of traditional, maybe five-hole hitter, uh, three, four, five type hitter. Uh, for any squad set. So, um, but what I would do is let's take the slow guys and look at them and I'll show you what I would do with them with the guys I have on the bench. Alan Trammell is at shortstop. Uh, so if he gets on late in a game and he has enough speed to be able to steal bases at 65 and 70 stealing. So it's not really a, a card that you couldn't steal bases with. You could, but if you felt like it, you need a little more confidence in your ability to be able to steal, uh, you know, Ozzy Smith. Uh, that's going to be the card to, to bring in for him. Uh, for Eddie Matthews, you could use either of these three here. Uh, you could pinch run with Roberto Alomar, Ozzie Smith, or Ricky Henderson. And then you could come and bring in Cal Ripken Jr. to play third base. Uh, for right field in Jose Batista, uh, if you needed somebody on base uh, as a pinch runner for that, uh, you could go with you could go with um, Ricky Henderson. That would be the perfect one, and uh, he could go over there and play and play right field. Or you could swap him out in the next defensive part of the inning with Matt Kemp. Uh, Kemp could play right, and uh, and Ricky would keep his primary uh, position out there and uh, keep all of his fielding uh, ability out there in uh, left field. So, uh, and then for the catcher slot in this one, uh, you've got Mike Piazza. I can pitch run any of these three guys I haven't already previously used and use the Johnny Bench card. Um, and for second base, uh, Cano and uh, interchangeable with uh, Roberto Alomar. And then Giambi, I would also go back to the Johnny Bench card as well. So with this type of lineup, it's really going to be a who gets on base first late in a game that you just need to make sure they move along the bases to be able to help you score. Uh, but the other thinking that I do, and, and it's the same thing with all three lineups, if you guys notice, is I love to put together, and actually I refuse to not do it, um, is I love to put together a left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right style lineup. Um, and with switch hitters uh, in the lineup, it also makes it uh, makes it much easier to be able to do. Um, you know, you can you can play around with the lineup a little bit more that way. So if you guys notice, I've done that with all three of these lineups: uh, left, right, left, right, left, right, switch, right. Uh, so that's uh, that's a good benefit. And then in my main lineup, I do the same exact thing with left, right, left, right, left, switch, left, right. Um, so what this does is it keeps it uh, more difficult for the opponent to be able to use a, uh, a set bullpen pitcher to face your entire squad. Uh, so, you know, there, 
if you're wanting those lefty lefty matchups or righty righty matchups out of the bullpen, uh, they're probably gonna have to have to use up more pitchers. And then you guys know sometimes you get a long game that goes you know past 12, 13, 14 innings um, in ranked seasons or something, and uh, you know it, it sometimes could come down to who has more pitchers left in their bullpen uh, or who runs out of pitchers faster. So um, you know it's it's something that uh, your opponent might not be thinking the game might last as long as you might, and you've planned ahead for that situation. So. Hopefully this makes sense. If you guys have any questions, as always, put them in the comments. Uh, I'm more than happy to help you guys with lineups or anything like that. Uh, but this is how I feel is the perfect way to put together uh, the perfect style of lineup in MLB The Show. And uh, I really think this is the most effective way uh, to maximize being able to score as many runs as possible and uh, and really put a hurting on your, on your opponent with uh, movement around the bases and uh, and getting runners in scoring position late in games if you need to. So uh, you guys do me a favor, as always, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, you know, like I said, again, if you got any questions, put them in the comment section of the video below. And uh, as always, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, check out BigTomK22Merch.com. That's my website. Uh, it's BigTomK22Merch.com. It's got uh, t-shirts and hats with my Threadhead logo there. Uh, that is my uh, logo on YouTube and, uh, and Twitter and across all platforms. Um, there's a bundle deal with the shirt and hat bundle together where you guys can save quite a bit of money. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.